when I was a teenager, early teenager, I got into magic, doing magic tricks, like card tricks and stuff. And uh, on YouTube, there was a, a, you know, I used to follow a lot of like magic trick tutorial channels and stuff. Obviously, this would eventually transform into me getting into cardistry and then a whole bunch of other stuff. But back in the day, one of the most popular magic trick tutorial channels was called Scam School. And uh, the host of Scam School, which was a, a show where they would teach a uh, the social engineering and the bar and on the street, as they called it, which was mostly bar, bar tricks and, and stuff like that, magic tricks. Um, the, the host of the, of the show was a guy called Brian Brushwood, um, and I really like the show, I still do, I still go back and watch old episodes, it holds up really well, it feels like a kind of like an early 2000s TV show condensed into like five to ten minute videos it's very it's very fun to watch and you learn like fun tricks from it although maybe don't actually watch it because then you'll figure out half of my entertaining logic puzzles and stuff that i know but anyway brian brushwood then went on with his friend jason murphy who was also occasionally a guest on scam school to make uh, a new youtube channel together called The Modern Rogue, where they sort of broaden out their horizons from just magic tricks and bar tricks into uh, sort of learning to become the, the perfect modern rogue scoundrel gentleman type of deal. Um, they do a very, very wide breadth of stuff on the channel. Uh, and so, of course, I like hopped on really early. I was like one of the like I subscribed after their first ever video and I've been watching them ever since pretty much now these days I wouldn't call them one of my favorite channels they, they've kind of run out of stuff to do um, and they've, they've kind of fell off I would say uh, in the past couple of years before they had a good run and they, they still make good videos from time to time you know I'm not saying they're all bad but there was a while where it was in, entirely bangers after bangers Anyway, this is all to, to say, in a very convoluted way, that they once made a video about uh, Chinese tea. Um, and this is the video of theirs that I've watched three times at this point. The first time I watched it was when it came out. Then, my friend Horolov uh, is into Chinese teas, and so I went back to watch it out of interest in Horolov's hobbies. Um, when I went back to rewatch it, uh, I, there's a, a moment where they talk about the tradition in in China that after you're served a cup of tea, you know, in, instead of saying thank you, because if if you said thank you every time someone poured you a cup of tea, you'd you'd be saying nothing but thank you the whole time. You know, it would be annoying. They have a shorthand which is to just tap your fingers twice on the table, and. Uh, there's a legend about where this comes from, which is that one time the emperor wanted to be among his people, so he, he put on a disguise and with his bodyguards went out into town. And he went to a tea house and he was pretending to be the vassal of one of his bodyguards. And so when they went to the tea house, he served tea to his bodyguards. Now, in the, the court setting, for the emperor to serve you tea would be like the highest honor possible and you would have to... to um, to bow twice, like a full uh, crouch on your knees and touch your head to the floor type of bow. I, f I forgot what they call it. Um, but you would have to bow twice because it's such a high honor. But obviously if the bodyguard did that, it would reveal, it, you know, he can't do that because he's in disguise. So instead, the bodyguard thinking quickly simulated the movement of bowing twice by touching his fingers on the table twice next to his cup because uh, when you pour someone tea you have to look at their cup and so the emperor would have to see him touch his fingers twice on the table and in the video the guy who's serving them tea says this is exactly the sort of thing Chinese people love and they see as like a the, like like this is the sort of elegance uh, that uh, that uh, 
sort of the, 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 the restraint and stuff like that that is very big in Chinese culture. Anyway, that sort of impressed something upon me because I was like, yeah, that is really cool. And so then that story randomly popped into my head a, a little while ago, a couple months ago. And because I remember that story, I decided to go back and watch the video again. They actually made two videos at the same place. One that was more of a, like, a very beginning introduction to what, like, tea, and then one that said, like, goes slightly more in depth. So I watched both of those again. And in one of those videos, another thing that they say is, uh, they're talking about tea culture in China. And how, like, the, the whole family drinks tea together or whatever. And, uh, Brian Brushwood says something like, something something and then they argue about politics or whatever and then corrects himself like well actually wait and then the, the the guy who's serving them tea says yeah no one no one argues politics in china <laughs> and they all kind of have like a weird awkward laugh about it because they pretty much avoid politics on the show but yeah no one no no one argues politics in china was what i got out of my rewatch of that and i think for some reason that just i was like oh yeah I guess no one argues politics in China. Isn't that kind of good? Like, isn't that kind of kind of cool? Like, like imagine. You know how much Americans complain about Thanksgiving and how their their boomer family members are always trying to argue politics with them or whatever. Like, that's not a problem in China. It's not a problem in dictatorships and stuff. Anyway, that thought has set me down a very long path, which I will get into in this episode, which has led to some interesting stuff, I hope. Now, I should say, welcome back to Under No Thank You's Bed, the first episode in a long time that I've made of this show, this podcast. Welcome back. Um, and uh, it seems like the gods have decided to uh, strike me down at this point. They have made it very difficult for me to record this podcast. They have decided to, to make it as difficult as possible. So before I get into the main meat of the story, I'll, I'll give you a, a little brief overview of that and why I'm going to have to pause the recording in about two minutes. As I go to record the podcast, firstly, uh, Don't Smite, who lives with me, uh, requests that I make food. Uh, so I... I'm going making them food, which is why I have to leave in two minutes, because I have to get up and put some water on to boil pasta. Which is not really a big deal. The more annoying thing is that I was like, well, I need some music to put on in the background. Now, the tradition for these types of videos is the Guts theme, going all the way back to the legendary old days of the Digibro decompression chamber when they uh, used to use the, the Guts theme from Berserk um, in, their, in those videos. Uh, but now, it's not, not the same time as back then. The Guts theme became a meme and is now sort of a, a signifier without anything to signify anymore. Um, and uh, doesn't carry the same emotional weight as it once did. People, especially since... You know, I have like, what, 600 subscribers? I guess most of them probably aren't ex-Digi fans like they used to be. Um, so they won't get the reference. And um, there's not really any point. They'll just think I'm using a dead meme. Or I will just think, I, I mean, I literally will just be using a dead meme. It's, it doesn't matter. And I don't feel the same way about Digi as I once did. So the Guts theme isn't going to do it. I thought about using, uh, but the, the comfy music in the background is kind of a big part, so I was like, maybe I'll use some video game music, but then uh, I couldn't find any good video game music, so then I was like, oh, I'll just use an anime o OST, anime background music. What anime is going to have comforting background music? I guess Sketchbook Four Colors, so that's what you're hearing in the background. So I go to download the Sketchbook Full Colors OST. Now, it's only available in playlist form. Oh, that's my alarm. Be right back to... <laughs> I have to put pasta on. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, this OST, right? 
this was the pain. So normally, if I was on a reasonable computer, uh, what I would do is FFmpeg, or actually uh, ytdlp dash dash extract dash audio space dash dash format. Uh, wait, no, dash dash audio dash format uh, space MP3 space, and then the the playlist URL. That is what you do to extra, to download uh, YouTube videos with mp3 format what it actually does is download them as webms then convert them to mp3 with ffmpeg uh but anyway so i go to do that on my mac because i'm like Macs are just maxi unix machines right like max unix uh like i'm sure that'll work so i homebrew install uh, i go to homebrew install ytdlp uh, which doesn't work for whatever reason, so I install it with. Fortunately, on their their GitHub, they have, you know, you could just, I just install it normally through curl or whatever, and then making it anyway. So I do that, and then that works flawlessly, and it downloads all the videos as WebMs, but I, it, it, it saves them as WebMs. It doesn't convert them. It's like, oh, you don't. It, it spits out an error message like, oh, bitch, you don't have FFmpeg on this computer. I'm like, oh yeah, of course, I don't have FFmpeg on this computer. So I'm like, oh, that, that shouldn't be too hard. So I look up FFmpeg Mac. I go to download it. Go there. It's like, oh, you have to go through a whole fucking process to install it. It's a, it's a really, an, it's kind of an annoying process, like manually uh, copying it or moving it to use a local bin uh, or U- USR local bin. I don't know if the, I always say the USR as user. I don't know if it actually stands for user. Uh, I should probably find out, because I just always call it user, but anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it's really annoying, and then even after all of that, it doesn't work. Uh, I don't know why, it's just annoying. And then at that point, I'm like, it would probably be faster to just do this on my ThinkPad and, uh, like, up, like, like, just copy it over to my Mac than to bother figuring out why FFmpeg isn't working. So I just do that. I just download it on my Mac. And it takes like five seconds, it's very fast. And then I'm like, okay, now I should put it on some... How do I transfer? And I'm like, best way to transfer files easily, I'll just upload them to catbox.moe, um, or litter.catbox.moe, because I don't need them permanently, you know, I just need them short for a short time. So I go, to do, I go to do that, I'm like, okay, so I should probably zip them first. Now, I, I have like use the zip command like like twice ever I, I've unzipped many things but I really need to zip things you know normally I go to do it in the GUI in um in Thunar because I'm like probably faster to just like select them with a GUI and, and right click create archive instead of you know the whole thing so I go to do that it doesn't work Thunar's like no archive manager found um, I don't know why I'm using Thunar, to be honest. They're actually significantly better. It's because I almost never use the graphical file manager. I pretty much exclusively use LF as my file manager on my ThinkPad. I, I rarely have to use a, a graphical file manager, so so I don't really have it set up very nicely. Anyway, that doesn't work. I try and look up why does this not work, and uh, the answer, like the the stack, the like the best voted Stack Overflow answer is just like omits important information. And I'm like, okay, fuck this. This is not worth it. Let me see if there's an easier way to go about this. So I can just use the zip command in the terminal. So I try that, and then I'm like, oh wait, I just realized I have no idea how to do this. So I have to man zip and then read through the entire fucking man page, and then I go to do it, and I'm like, oh nice, okay, it worked. Upload it to Catbox, ship it over. Oh wait. All I did was zip a f- like an a f- empty folder, <laughs> and not the actual files. Fuck. Okay, go do it again, and yeah. Then I finally had it uploaded, it downloaded it onto the Mac, dragged it into Logic, and now here you are hearing this nice background music. So that was a fucking pain. Not to mention all of this is every bit of typing on this Mac is just hell because uh, the the. The S key doesn't have a keycap. Uh, the D key is broken and sometimes will type D twice. And then, uh, like, yeah, it will just sometimes, like, double double type D. Um, and then, to just to make it that more annoying, the backspace is completely fucked 
it doesn't have a keycap and the little like black button that the keycap normally presses down on it has like fallen off so it's like just the capacitive thing I don't even know what it is but basically it doesn't fucking work half the time the delete button the backspace button um, and uh, I do have a keyboard that I can plug in but it's never like uh, if I'm typing short strings of text it's like do I want to go to the effort of dragging the keyboard out from under all the mark that it's under and plugging it in and then rearranging my seating position so that I have a keyboard in front of me just to type like one line of text and then put it away it's the do you know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of more hassle than it's worth, so I just deal with the, the shitty delete key situation. By the way, I have to be on my Mac. I don't have to be, but the, 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 the microphone on ThinkPads is notoriously right next to the fan, <laughs> meaning that it does not sound very good. And my audio interface and proper microphone are in the front room, attached to the desktop where Dotsmite is, because... Um, they need to record videos and talk to people on Discord, and I need to talk to people in CSGO. So, <sighs> that's the situation of trying to record this fucking podcast. Now let's get into um, what I was originally going to talk about. So... After listening to that Chinese people don't talk about politics comment, I think that somehow wormed its way into my brain, and I suddenly realized, why do we talk about politics? Why do I talk about politics? It's useless. It's pointless. I spend, I looked back at my videos that I've been making, and half the time I'm just making stupid political arguments. Uh, to who? Who am I talking to? I'm not talking to anyone. Like, who cares what I have to say about politics? I don't have the power or will to change anything. Neither does anyone in my audience. Am I trying to convince people? Am I, am I like a preacher? Am I trying to convert people to my religion? It, doesn't, it never works, right? Like, the only way that I would be converting people is by looking cooler than them to make them feel threatened and emasculated and then associating that with my ideology. So they're like, if I want to be called, like, no thank you, I have to convert to his ideology. Uh, like, that's not something I want to be doing. That sounds like a terrible, like, I don't want to, that sounds, this sucks. And not like it works, and not like I even want to do that. Like, I don't really care um, about like, converting people, you know? I, I, I sort of had, had this ideological worm that, like, I should care about converting people, and so I've just been doing it without thinking. I've just been arguing politics without thinking. Like, I, I caught myself making a, like, th this also, also, this also came to a head when I was making, um, one of my recent videos. Um, I've actually forgotten which one. Uh, let me look it up. I'll, I'll remember the title if I see it. Uh, the goal is to truly believe you never existed. Um, I, w I was making that, and I had to delete so many, you know, that one I was like, I'm going to edit this down a bit so it's actually entertaining to watch and not six hours long. It was originally about five and a half hours long, I edited it down to one hour twenty. Um, and, and a lot of that was just deleting clips where I was talking about terrible politics that I don't even, I'm not even invested in. Like... Um, fucking like, like, like gender politics and uh, economics and shit. I mean, I left a little bit in, but just like a tiny bit. And even then, like, still a lot of the, the videos kind of political. And I'm like, who, who, who fucking cares about this? Like, who am I talking to right now? Why? Why am I trying to like? Why? Why do? Why am I convinced that this matters? That what I say. Uh, so I've sort of made a sort of trying to not do that, you know. There's the, the old saying that everything is political, but uh, my counter to that is, uh, well, that's uh, just because, you know, politics is a, a field of study, right? Just like any other, it can be applied to pretty much anything. You know, you could use, you, you could go to a, a political debate, you know, I know, a Donald Trump versus Sleepy Joe. Orange Man versus Sleepy Joe, right? And, and you could you could go there 
and and you could analyze the airflow, the, the the fluid dynamics of the air as it leaves their mouths as they're talking, and you could do a really detailed analysis of the physics going on there. But that wouldn't be relevant, right? Like that wouldn't, uh, you know, you you would get true factual data by doing that. You you would get data, but it wouldn't be useful data. It would be it would be that would be an improper thing to do, right? You wouldn't do that. In the same way, you can talk about the politics behind anything, but that doesn't mean it's actually relevant. That doesn't doesn't mean you have to do it, or you should do it, or it's useful. That would be improper. You know, you, you, it, it's not... Just because you can do it, doesn't mean it's always useful. It's like it's like talking to someone who's a... a, a um, what's the word? I've forgotten the name of the philosophical stance. Like, like a universal nihilist or whatever like someone who believes that the universe isn't real basically or that like yeah someone who believes that the universe isn't real and like you could talk about any any subject with them and at the end of the day you know they can just say well none of it's real anyway so i win kind of deal it's like yeah but that's not like the proper time to bring that up um so, so I think the argument of like, well, you talk, you end up talking about politics because politics is at the root of everything, isn't true. You know, if anything, physics is at the root of any of everything, um, and we don't spend all of our time talking about physics. So why should we spend all of our time talking about? I wish we spent all of our time talking about physics. I, I now I'm, I'm hella willing to spend my time converting people to my particular interpretation of quantum physics. I, I am so happy to do that. Uh, <laughs> But we won't right now. Uh, anyway, doesn't this song sound like a um, a song from Fooly Cooly? I I can't. I remember in the anime hearing this and being like, "Is this is this a cover of the Fooly Cooly song?" You know. Is it actually? I'm looking it up right now. Apparently, Watashi no Jikan is the name of the song. And apparently, there's a Hatsune Miku song by this name. Is it the same song? No. No, this is a completely different song. Watashi no Jikan, I believe, translates to My Time. Anyway, so then I was sort of thinking about this, right? This sort of politics is useless to think about. Like, the, uh, I've always known this, right? And I've always said, well, you know, even though it's useless, it's if, if you find it fun to research and discuss and debate, then by all means go for it. And I sort of realized that I wasn't having fun. And I don't think anyone really is. Um... And I, and I think the more desperately people cling to that idea, like there are some people who very desperately cling to the idea that they're like, uh, like people because people who are like into politics, you know, people who aren't into politics who talk about politics don't need to cling to that idea, right? But people who are uh, see themselves as being politically minded, you know, they they've read some theory or whatever, um, uh, are likely to fall into one of two camps either uh, they're, they're, you know, they're sitting there in their armchairs not really doing, you know, reading all of this stuff and talking about how people ought to live their lives while not really doing anything, right? Or how society ought to be organised, I should say while not doing anything active to do that you know, to make that change other than maybe voting, going to a couple of protests but you know, we're talking about people who don't do that maybe voting and maybe, you know, talking about it on the internet, right? Or on the other end, you have people who really don't want to be that person, so they spend all their time doing really performative uh, pol political action in, in order to appear that they are not the first type of person. There is no in-between. Um, uh, and those type of people, they, they sort of have to do that because they have to convince themselves, right? Like, okay, so I know I'm just a guy... Uh, but I'm really inter interested in this how, like, you know, I think I have a pretty good idea of how society should be organized I don't have the power to do that to, to make this happen um, 
here's this other guy who disagrees with me on how society should be organized um, and I want to tell him to shut the fuck up and own him uh, right and somehow this feels emotionally important to me so I have to convince myself that it's important um, and so I'll say that by being like well like, even though I know that you know I can't really make a difference at the end of the day it's interesting for me and fun for me to do this blah 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 but these people aren't having fun I, I'm not having fun they're not having fun the more into it you are the less fun you're having they just get mad um, in a sense they're having like some kind of weird uh, type 2 fun or type 3 fun Uh, where they get mad on purpose, but, uh, you know, a lot of that's just sort of driven by, uh, like, they don't like getting mad, because they t they tend to surround themselves with people who agree with them, and then that makes it, every encounter with someone who doesn't agree with them, more shocking, and they get more mad with it, which means they shut themselves off more, this cycle happens all the time, it's encouraged by social media algorithms and this not even just the algorithms but just the structure of popular mm -hmm. social media and online communication platforms like discord i've seen it happen in front of my eyes uh, to multiple people anyway politics is a bad rap you don't want to get into that stuff it's worse than it's unironically worse than heroin uh, you'll you'll end up because you know Heroin only harms you, but if you get into politics, you 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 everyone has to listen to your you being annoying. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that thought happened to me, and I was like, I need to stop fucking going on about politics and like like I became very nihilistic about the whole thing. Sort of like you you can't. Ch oh, I just slightly broke this thing. Okay, it's not it's not broken. It's fine. Um, but, uh, so, but yeah, that happened, and then, that sort of led to me going back on, like, ideas that I've previously had, but not had the balls to dive into properly, which is how unimportant, uh, sort of political action actually tends to, tends to be in the grand scheme of things, like, I was, I, I often think about a couple of things, like, um, the big two I go to is the Enlightenment and the Feminist Movement. That, like, the Feminist Movement was uh, mainly a product of industrialization and the sort of jobs that people could do now, and then a product of accessible and reliable birth control, and a product, so, and a product of, um, uh, tech, like, like, widespread technology that took, uh, household made household chores m more simple like the washing machine for example so essentially the birth of the feminist movement i know obviously the suffragettes and stuff were earlier than that but uh, the birth of the feminist movement uh, as we know it uh, was was pretty much predicated on technological development and came about as a consequence of that rather than uh, as a consequence of uh, women are oppressed you know because you you always have to think about well, if women have always been oppressed, why did it take them until the last couple hundred years to start talking about it, how that's bad? Uh, they didn't have the, the opportunity to do so before te technology and other inhuman factors they didn't have control over set up the conditions for them to do so. Um, and the Enlightenment I, um, was pretty much caused by the plague. Uh, happening, uh, or you, you don't have to call it the. Sorry, did I say the Enlightenment? I did say the Enlightenment. I don't think I meant the Enlightenment. I think I just meant like generally speaking, the end of feudalism, not the Enlightenment. That's a different thing. Sorry about that minor mistake. Pretty big mistake, actually. <laughs> anyway, I meant the transition from feudalism to capitalism was a product of. Uh, two things: uh, the Black Death, killing off um, a quarter, like a big chunk of the workforce, meaning that individual work. Well, three things actually. It was a product of three things: uh, the Black Plague killed off a large number of workers, meaning that individual workers suddenly had much more labour power. Uh, you know, like it, it's harder to replace someone if there are physically less people. That was the first thing. I'm going to have to go in about 13 seconds, 12, 11, 10, 9, okay, uh, I'll come back to this in a second.
Okay, that's done. Hopefully there should be no more interruptions. What was I talking about? Okay, so the plague killed people. That led to an increase in individual workers' labor power. Secondly, um, the, the, the gra- like just due to unforeseen economic circumstances leading to the gradual accumulation of wealth in the merchant class. Um, just, yeah, by basically circumstance, like by, by coincidence, not due to anyone actively trying to do that. And then uh, the third thing was, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, cheap steel. Uh, technological inventions that led to uh, steel becoming much cheaper to produce. Those were the three things that led to the Industrial Revolution. Uh, not really anything to do with blah blah blah. Anyway, those are, I, I, I'm kind of conflating a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm conflating like the end of feudalism, the Industrial Revolution and uh, the Renaissance all into one for no reason because they're completely different things they're, I don't know why uh, they're like big gaps in time but fuck you I, I listen they're basically all the same thing like complexity bro anyway so I've been thinking about that for a while um, and this has sort of led me to to the position of like to, 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 it, much like art, you know, a lot of artists, and I'll, I'll talk about art a little bit more in a second, but like a lot of artists see themselves as changing the world somehow. Um, they're like, they, they're like, look at Vietnam and all this great protest movement, protest music. Whereas really, art is almost always reactionary. I, there basically has not ever been art that has sparked a revolution. It's always only documented or responded to one. Uh, and I think now you could say rev- there's never been revolution that sparked um, these shifts in these inhuman circumstances. It's always inhuman circumstances that spark political change in the first place. And really, if that's the case, then what use do political movements even have if they're just responses to these things that we don't have any control over? as individuals at least um you know can they even be said to be real (laughs) like can they be said to be authentic movements if they're just responses to natural circumstances that that are out of the people involved's control i say no you know not only should i not talk about politics but no one should ever talk about politics because it doesn't do it like politics isn't what changes the world uh Like, the invention of, I don't know, the internet has changed the world that everyday people live in much more than any economic policy ever has. And um, I know some people might respond to this segment by saying, well, technological change can only happen under the preconditions uh, the, where there is economic viability for so the research and development to take place or whatever, um, but but those econ- but those preconditions themselves are only engineered by outside forces, not by conscious actors. So that happened. So then I went through this phase, and then that led into ants. And um, this realization that conscious thought or consciousness, intelligence, human intelligence is, you know, we as humans like to think of ourselves as very intelligent and this sort of like, that's our special trait, you know, like all, all these other animals, like cheetahs can run fast, peregrine falcons can fly fast, blue whales are big, uh, bears are strong um, blah 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 but humans we're the smartest and that's what makes us special and that's the most important thing to be is the smartest and so that's why humans are the best right like that's how we're the top of the the, the, the tree um, and uh, to an extent obviously that's very true um, however 
I had a realization that like a lot of the stuff that is attributed to human intelligence should really be attributed not to conscious thought or intelligent thought, but it's rather a, a, con a consequence of human sociality, not intelligence. Right? Like you look around yourself at the world, you walk outside of your house for once and you see paved roads and, and big skyscrapers and shops with supply chains and lamp posts and computers and Wi-Fi signals and you're like, wow, well, human intelligence sure has had a massive impact on the natural environment. But all of these things were really consequences of human sociality rather than human intelligence. Like, uh, ants also build a very big structure. Every, every, all the, the highly social animals, right? Like, the, the, the eusocial animals, like ants, bees, wasps, termites, etc. They also build massive megastructures, significantly better than humans are at it. Like, they, they um, uh, that, like, termites are crazy good at building shit, and so are ants and, and bees. Like, uh, beehives are very complex structures. Uh, uh, anyway. You know, other use so other highly social animals are also capable of doing basically the same shit humans do. You know, like ants, like, like uh, humans are like we're so smart. We invented buildings and agriculture. Yeah, meanwhile, ants be like builds nests and does agriculture and has fucking standing armies. Like ants, some species of ants have standing armies. Um, they have like, the, the, yeah, like humans are just ants. Like there's, we're nothing special at all, and all of our achievements are down to our social. Pretty much all of our achievements are down to our sociality, not our intelligence or whatever. Although, as I was thinking, I was like, well, the reason we're able to be highly social is because of language, which is a consequence of our development. Unlike these other eusocial animals, which are sort of instinctually social humans you know if you look at other primates they have complex social structures but not collaborative in the same way as humans are in terms of like collaboratively creative like like bonobos are have a highly collaborative social structure but they don't really use that to um you know use complex tools or build creative things or anything you know they just they just vibe which you know absolutely shouts out to bonobos i think they they have it fucking figured out like that's what you should be doing with what we have uh <laughs> but uh yeah humans because of language blah 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 have this ability to turn the social instincts of primates into something a bit more complicated significantly more complicated and widespread and language is a consequence of intelligence, but then, you know, intelligence is just a concept, consequence of cooked food, um, or isn't it, you know, language, intelligence, what's the relation there, how, to, to what extent does intelligence influence language, and to what extent does language influence intelligence, I say a lot, I say language sort of predicates metacognition, um, blah blah blah, boring. Anyway, this sort of just led me down a spiral of just like human intelligence is like nothing. But like, you've seen the the memes about machine intelligence, right? That like you'll get it, you'll get AIs that are stupid, and they'll be stupid, and they'll be stupid, and then they'll be like still pretty stupid, but like as smart as like dogs, and then they'll be still pretty stupid, but like almost as smart as humans. And this will take like a hundred years, and then they'll be as smart as humans, and then instantly they'll be. 50 million times as smart as humans they'll, they'll be super intelligent like, it's like once you get close to us it, it, it's like very very the smarter you are the smarter you can make yourself smarter if you're a machine that can self edit or a program that can self edit unlike a human who can't do that uh, which is why we suck and we are not actually very intelligent at all uh, humans actually really suck at being intelligent um yeah, humans are dumb as fuck. Like, like, can, how, how long does it take you to mine a Bitcoin? <laughs> exactly. Ret you're literally a retard on the on the, the the global scale. Like, compared to a computer, you're fucking stupid. How many calculations can you do per second? Me, it's like zero. I don't think I can do any complex calculations in a second. Computers, they can do like millions. You're stupid. Uh, Anyhow, the only... Remember when I said I'll talk about art in a bit? 
This is the this is now we're now in a bit. The only time thing that humans do regularly that's impressive and notable that actually is a result of intelligence and not just sociality is art. Um, uh, and so I think that's probably why people like Deleuze like art so much. It's probably related to that. I'm sure someone who's read more Deleuze than me is going to be like, no, it's actually because art is like it is something else or whatever. But whatever. Fuck you. Nerd. But I think it kind of comes down to that. That art is like the single creation of humans that is actually due to our intelligence, not just our sociality. Which is, you know, generally speaking, I think people think of sociality as a side effect of our intelligence. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe we're intelligent because we're social. But then there's a bunch of highly intelligent people who aren't highly social sociable I don't know you can't like measure intelligence so it's kind of ridiculous to even like because because everyone looks at it from an anthropocentric point of view right where they're like they see a great book or something or a great movie and they see that as like highly intelligent right they see like like I would say I don't know Ozu my favorite director. Yeah, my, fa- I, my favorite director is Ozu, yeah. I've seen a couple movies in my time. Like, like I look at that and I'm like, a, a genius made... Th- like, I look at one of his films and I'm like, a genius made this. And if a genius made this, that must mean someone very intelligent made this. And machines can't do that, therefore, uh, Ozu is smarter than any computer. But that's just based on a value system that's basically based on a moralistic value system that is completely subjective if you look at any objective measures of into anything that could be objectively measured to be intelligence which means something that's actually tangible and real uh humans are bad 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 like even compared to other animals humans are often bad at it like there's there's monkeys that can do stuff with numbers and the short-term memorization significantly better than humans uh, there's there's uh, dolphins and and um, uh, sperm whales that can do stuff significantly better than humans, but that just tends to be stuff we don't value because we haven't built our cultures around those because we're not good at them. Uh, whereas machinic culture is going to be based around stuff that machines are good at and not stuff that humans are good at, and maybe that's economization or something. I don't know. But this sort of just led me to completely devalue human intelligence as something remarkable or notable or valuable in any way. And uh, that's where we're at now. Just like, th- th- this stuff's useless. You, you gave me this brain, and for what? And, uh, you know, not that that affects me in any way. But... Yeah, that's just the conclusion I've come to. It's just this sort of whatever. I don't know. Is it nihilism? Pessimism, I guess. Regarding the supposed intelligence of the human species. I don't think any intelligent creature would. I mean, I'm not. This, that's actually kind of a gay hippie thing to say, so I'm not going to say it. But anyway. Uh, on to completely other subjects. How long have I been recording for? 43 minutes? I have until I run out of Sketchbook Full Colors OST. And maybe longer. You know, people... Long podcasts are good. Podcasts. Put it on while you're working out or something, you know? It's a podcast. That's what they're there for. They're there, they're there to put on while you're doing other stuff. Um... Yeah, I don't really have a conclusion at the end of that. I'm trying to think of the, like... I guess that's just the conclusion, is most of... Just a sort of... Post-humanism that I'm always doing, you know? Not not anything particularly special or interesting. Just in a bit more of a thought-through, reified way. Anyhow... Put, 
remember when I said put this podcast on when you're working out? Remember that epic moment when I said that two seconds ago? Oh, those were the days. I have started climbing, rock climbing, sport climbing. Actually, not sport climbing, bouldering. Uh, with some some people I know in real life. And uh, I gotta say, those boulderers and rock climbers that you see on the internet that are good at it, like Magnus Midsper and Adam Ondra and Alex Honnold, like, like damn, that shit, they're, they're really good. <laughs> like, it's not a joke. Uh, but anyway, particularly Adam Ondra, he's like actually good. Uh, I mean, they're all they're they're compared to me. They're all actually good. I mean, they're all top athletes. I don't know. Let's not to, to get into this. Anyway, they they're all great. They're all incredibly all the top level athletes are very skilled in every sport. I, I, but climbing, I've been going climbing, and I've been also trying to exercise just more in general. I have a pull up bar uh, that I do fake half pull ups on because I can't do a full pull up, which is very inconvenient given that the sport I have chosen to pick up is climbing which is maybe the sport in the world where pull-ups are the most important other than a pull-up contest uh, like the the muscles that you use to do a pull-up uh, in climbing are like very important you need all of that you need shoulder strength and grip strength in climbing and that you also need like those are very big deal especially grip strength uh, like top level climbers grip strength is just absolutely insane even just like it doesn't have to be top level just like good climbers just have insane grip strength which I do not currently have uh, so I'm doing like weak ass um, baby pull ups where you you sort of like you, you get under the bar and you, you keep your feet on the ground but you go like diagonal so you're like leaning back and like holding yourself because I can't do a pull up yet right and when you can't do a pull-up, people just say, well, just keep trying, which is really stupid, because if you can't do it, you're not going to be able to do it. You can't train the muscles if you can't do it. So to train the muscles, you have to start from a, an easier version of the exercise, which is these, like, pull-ups where you're sort of, like, your heels are on the floor, you keep your core engaged and, like, your, your, your body straight. It's sort of like, imagine doing, like, an upside-down push-up. <laughs> like... Like, you, you sort of, like, lean back and hang from the bar above you with your feet, like, on the ground, but not... Yeah, and then you, like, pull yourself up like that. And the, the further forward you put your feet, the harder it is, basically. Um, and so I do, like, three reps of 20 every day. Which, um, let me tell you, that shit is fucking hard for me. Maybe, I don't know if that's hard for you guys, but, uh, that, that shit, like, fucking destroy, like, by the third rep, I am dead. Like, my arms are dead. My shoulders, and especially, just fucking fucked. I think I have really weak shoulders. Um, m my biceps are pretty bad, but they're not, like, that bad. I mean, they're bad, don't get me wrong. Um, but, like, oftentimes, it's my shoulders that let me down. But that's why we train, I guess. There's that manga panel that sticks in my brain, which is like... I don't know what manga it's from, I've just seen it on 4chan a bunch. Which It's like a manga panel of a, a guy... Like, he does it doing like a really high kick, like like all the way up to like a, like a full scissor... Not a scissor kick, but like a full up vertical kick up to his head, basically. And uh, the, 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 it says... Um, the only thing we truly own is the body we shape every day. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, sort of. But, uh, ideally. This isn't me turning into a fit guy, by the way. Like, people on fit tend to care a lot about the aesthetics of their bodies. I don't really care about the aesthetics of my body at all. Um... In terms of, like, my my aesthetic goals for my body, I just want to lose some weight. Um, I don't care that much about, lo like, looking good aesthetic-wise, but, like, I'll talk more about that in a second. Anyway, 
I, I would like to lose some weight and I would like to build my arms and shoulders out just a little bit, not crazy, just so that they look more proportional to the rest of my body. That's literally it. Every, that's all I care about in terms of aesthetics. But I could never drive myself to actually do something just because of aesthetics, because at the end of the day, um, you know, it's not something that matters that much to me. I go outside wearing pajamas on the regular to, to the shop or whatever. Like, it's not something that matters to me how I look to other people. So, um, but climbing is actually a good way to motivate myself because the, it's like a video game, you know? There, there are, like, levels. Like, uh, the bouldering grades go from V0 all the way up to V13 or something. Um, and so it's like you go there and you can see yourself improving by, by climbing different grades which one's difficult for you um, I think I've only ever I think the best I've done is like one I've, I've climbed a fairly easy V3 once um, but I would put myself at V2 level which uh, is pretty bad <laughs> however I, if I was to make it one excuse for myself I would say uh, the rented climbing shoes at the climbing gym they suck ass um, if I had a proper pair of climbing shoes, I think things would be, like, smears would be a bit easier for me. Um, or, like, these, like, weird little, awkward, tiny little to footholds. Anyway, that's an excuse. At the end of the day, I need to train harder. But after a session of climbing, it's just, you're so fucked. Like, I, I know about other people, but I'm so fucked. Like, I, I'm, like, aching for the next day. I can't do anything. I don't know how I would even train more often, because... Like, yeah, I like I physically. There's no way I could climb two days in a row, basically. Uh, so looks like I'm gonna run out of sketchbook full colors OST before um, I finish recording this podcast. Uh, hmm, I should download some more music. Anything? In, what can I think of that would be good? Do I have something on my computer that I could just use instead of having to download something? Let's see. Oh, I, I probably have the, um... Let's see. The Umihara Kawase OST. I always use that, right? Uh... Where would I have saved that? Is this the entire OST? That's only 17 minutes. Alright, well, I guess we're gonna put this then. Fuck it. Who's gonna stop me? Did it work? No? Where did it... What the fuck? Where did it go? It said it was importing large audio file and then it just didn't import. Oh, I probably have to stop recording. Okay, that seems to have worked. So, climbing. Yeah, uh, I'm going weekly. Uh, I, I was going to say just stuff about it in general. Uh, that's the end of the OST. Now we're on to... Anyway. Um, so, yeah, bouldering. Um, lots of cool terminology. Uh, <laughs> it's fun, I think. It's fun to... It's taken me... Oh, I'll tell you one thing. My whole life, you know, people have always said... Like, my, for example, my dad is like a, a runner. Like, he, he runs um, marathons and stuff. Uh, not not all. He's, he's not a mainly a marathon runner, but he's like a long distance. He runs like... Um, 10Ks or whatever, uh, pretty damn, like, multiple times. He's a, he's a pretty big into, long, like, running. Anyway, like, people like my dad and, and everyone has always told me that, like, uh, and science as well has told me that, like, when you do exercise, you get these endorphins that make you feel good, you know? Like, like when you, like, uh, I don't know, are exercising in some way, like it, like, it hurts, but it feels good somehow. And I have never in my life experienced that. I, when I was a kid, my dad made me do a bunch of, like, sports, kind of. Like, I played tennis a lot as a kid. I had, like, a, like tennis lessons as a kid. And uh, 
there was a brief time when I was doing like some some trampolining as a kid, uh, like like gymnastic trampolining on like proper Olympic trampolines, and I was I was kind of cracked for a while. Like like I would always go to if I had like a friend who had a trampoline, I would go there and pull out like the back full twists and shit, and they would be like, "Whoa, I think there's no way I can do that anymore." Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and uh, other sports as well sometimes uh, very briefly some football obviously because I'm British uh, although I, I don't really like football um, and uh, very briefly jujitsu when I was really quite young but I got bullied to shit by the other kids in the club and hated it uh, and climbing for a bit as a kid which is why I knew about it and thought it would be interesting um, and yeah, I never got it, like, yeah, I, I pretty much just went because my dad told me to go to all of those things, like, I never really enjoyed it, um, especially not, like, the exercise aspect of it, like, I might enjoy playing a tennis match, like, sometimes at tennis club, um, like, they would get me to play against another kid around my age or whatever, like, that, that would be the, it was very rare, like, 90% of the time it was just drills for the whole lesson, um, but then, like, once in a while, it would be, like, play a match, like, your lesson for today, like, once every couple months, it'd be like, okay, today, you just have a tennis match against this guy, and that would be, like, sick, I would lose every time, because I sucked, <laughs> but I think they would always put, I think it's the only other people that went were, like, just cracked, like, I don't think it was, I was, like, that bad, I think the other people were just really good, uh, and that, like, that was fun when it's, like, a, something competitive, uh, like a sport, but, like, the actual exercise part has never been fun for me. I've never, never in my life have I gotten the, like, satisfaction or, like, pleasure that you get from exercising your muscles or, or working out or running or anything like that, especially running. I hate running. Um, and so then, so, like, climbing... I figured is the only sp like how am I going to actually get myself to to do some exercise regularly? Well, if I make it a weekly event with a friend, then it's like I have peer pressure, you know. Like I, like if I'm like okay every Wednesday we go climbing, uh, then he's going to be like hey no it's Wednesday we go and climbing, and then I have to be a bitch to be like no I'm not going to go climbing, you know that's going to be that's going to pressure me into it. And secondly, climbing is not just all about strength. In fact. Uh, oftentimes it's way more about technique and um, thonking uh, than it is about about uh, brute strength. Uh, like um, in, in in bouldering, they call a they call it they literally call like climbing a route. They call it a problem, uh, right? Like it's literally about solving the problem. Uh, like what technique would would be best suited would be most efficient for doing this and you have to like think it through and that's actually arm and activating it's not just mindlessly lifting weights or something which just gets boring for me really quickly it's actually something that you know you have to put thought into into your technique and into what techniques you're going to use are appropriate to use where and etc which makes it way more entertaining <laughs> than all of this other stuff um like that's actually going to push me to keep at it that that bit alone is fun w without the exercising stuff like just the the problem solving of how do i get to the top of this wall as efficiently as possible is is entertaining by itself and so that's already something to keep me interested in it and then uh, and and so then i'm like i'm going to do some pull ups because i want to get better at climbing like not for any other reason other than like, my friend who I go climbing with and his friend who has now started joining us. Um, like, my friend is pretty much strong. Like, he's quite a bit stronger than me. He's definitely much fitter than me. And his friend is way fitter than both of us. Like, he's an actual, like, sporty guy. Like, he, he does parkour a lot. And, and and he was very sporty in school and stuff. So, like, he's, he's got... He's, like, built. Like, you look at him, he's, 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 a, he's a manlet. So, you know, manlet's always strength max. Uh... <laughs> Uh, so yeah he's like built and he can like outlift both of us uh, um, and my friend is way stronger than me and I'm like by far the fattest and weakest out of the three so 
just to be able to keep up with them it's like okay I want to build some strength in my arms and upper body just so I can like keep up with them on overhangs and stuff because like generally speaking in climbing uh, it's a lot about technique but when it comes to overhangs so climbing that's kind of like where you're uh, like the wall is leaning over you uh, you have to activate your your arms a lot like way more than than uh, a wall that's straight or leaning away from you like a, a wall that's leaning away from you um, you're, you're you know always ideally in climbing you want to keep as much weight on your legs and as much like off of your arms as possible but just because your legs are way stronger than your arms in every situation uh, and then obviously the steeper the overhang is the less you're going to be able to do that so in situations like that they can both climb way better than me but in situations where it's like more about just positioning your center of gravity properly and weight I have a chance of keeping up with them more uh, and so yeah it's just a kind of cringe and embarrassing when I'm like failing a climb that they both manage uh, so that's why I want to do, learn to do pull ups just because it's always been embarrassing my whole life that I couldn't do a pull up you know, there was a time when I couldn't do a push-up, and push-ups are way easier to learn than pull-ups. Like, it, it took me literally a week to learn how to do, like, to, I don't know, get it in my body, how to do push-ups, and then since then I've never not been able to do push-ups. I don't know how many I can do now, I, I, I don't remember, but I can at least do push-ups to a reasonable degree. Uh, but pull-ups I've never been able to do, um some people can just do them like even though they don't work out they can just do pull ups I've never been able to do that maybe because I'm kind of really like quite tall so maybe I'm just heavier <laughs> I don't know but uh um so yeah it's a good opportunity to learn I'm about halfway like I can do about half a pull up right now um or chin up whatever you want to call it I can do a, I, I, at the start I could lift myself about if I was like hanging off of a bar I could lift myself about one centimeter now I can lift myself until my elbows are like a um, like an L like a, a right angle but I can't really go further than that uh, possibly because of my training technique like because of the like I don't really practice that I, I don't probably get enough practice on that last little push but also when I actually try and do pull ups I feel it not in my biceps, but I, like, I feel it mostly in my forearms and in my shoulders. I think it's mostly about that I just need to train my shoulders more, and the best way to train my shoulders more is to just keep practicing these pull-ups. So that's what I'm going to do. And then that'll make me better at climbing. Hopefully. But anyway, back to what I was actually saying. So because I can't, I don't get any actual like endorphin release from from just working out on its own that's why I picked climbing because it's something that's actually fun to problem solve and that you know is something fun even though the, the, the exercise bit is just kind of a side effect blah 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 well it t only took me like over a month of constantly working out and finally in these last couple days when I'm doing my pull-up practice and like pushing myself to the absolute limit of what I can do because I try and put my feet like as far away from my body as I possibly can so it's make it as hard as possible for myself otherwise you don't build muscle um, and uh, oh, finally over the past, past couple days after I do my workout my, my pull up practice I, I actually feel like like I get a rush of endorphins and I actually feel like a, a weird sense of euphoria after it and the pain kind of feels like I, I know I get what they mean by like Oh, feel the burn it feels good kind of deal like I, I finally actually have that experience after this long my whole life I've never had it and I finally have it where it's like oh I actually see why people do this now like yeah that does feel kind of satisfying uh, and pleasurable I still don't think I'd ever just lift for the sake of lifting um, just because it's so much effort for not really much gain but uh, for the sake of getting better at climbing um yeah, that's good. I will say, like, one of the reasons I've never really been into... Or was the, I'd say one of the things I find, like, annoying about lifting, and... Which is 
oftentimes minimized in climbing, but not a hundred percent, as I'll, I'll talk about. So, the, so the other last time we went climbing, we went to the the steepest overhang. They have like a, a proper like cave simulation bit where it's a completely uh, horizontal section. Like it's like a cave with like a curve up. Like imagine. Yeah, imagine kind of like a mini cave, and there's there's holes all along the side, and it goes completely vertical, or completely horizontal, so you're like hanging properly upside down, to like, at some points. And on that, like, my two friends could do it, they, they, it was very difficult for them, but after keeping at it, they managed to, to, to send the easiest route, uh, but I couldn't do it, like, no matter how, I tried a lot, and I couldn't do it. Um, and then I got really fucking mad because I was like, th- "This is the stuff that I. That's that's just a feel. That's something that I don't find good at all. This is why I don't like games like RuneScape or even RuneScape isn't that much of a big deal. But I'd say just RPGs. This is why I don't like RPGs um, uh, in general. Uh, which is the I like, and I buy I like games like CS:GO and shooters like Quake and, and stuff like that. Because like, if I die in CS:GO or or Cruelty Squad or some other game I like, Mario 64, it's because I fucked up as a human. It's because I, in the moment, executed the controls poorly. Uh, right? And at the time, like, I, if I could time travel and execute it perfectly, then I could execute it perfectly. And it's just a matter of execution and, and knowledge and skill. Whereas in a game like, I don't know, some, some RPG, right, you could just be underleveled. And it's like, okay, no matter how well I play here, I'm never going to be able to do it. I have to just spend, uh, you know, a bunch of hours grinding in a low-level area in order to to level my player, and then I can go back, and then then I'll be able to do it, right? It it doesn't feel like you would like I achieved anything by doing that. It's just like okay, now I just have to slog through this bullshit for no reason because the game's badly designed. That's how I feel, and that's how I felt climbing that time, like that time, because it's like no matter of no amount of good technique is going to get me through this. It's just I physically don't have the grip strength and upper body strength to pull this off. Like, there's no cheat here. There's no, like, I can... Oh, if, but if I... Like, in CS, right? My aim isn't the best in CS. Like, I, I, I don't have the best aim. But I have really good game sense and really good movement. And so I can often compensate for my bad aim by outthinking the other player, uh, right? And, and putting them in a bad position. So then I have the advantage and my aim doesn't have to be the best. And that feels really good. Right, because it's like, okay, I know my aim isn't the best, so I can compensate for it. Whereas with this situation, it's like, no matter what I do, there is no compensating for it. You either grind for like uh, months doing pull-ups and or grip strength exercises and stuff, uh, or you just can't do it. There's no amount of technique like, oh, but if I play it smarter than it, like, yeah, I may not be the strongest, but I can, if I can play it smarter than everyone else, I can compensate for my weakness. There's none of that. It's just, okay, now you have to waste, like, months and months of your life doing bullshit, and then it will just happen. Like, there's no level of that which is just, like, where I, I felt like I was smart <laughs> or I had to do anything to achieve it. It's just time. It feels like it just feels like bullshit to me. It doesn't feel fun. It doesn't feel satisfying to complete it. Like if uh, like the 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 brief satisfaction that I'll get eventually in like three months time when I've finally built up enough strength to do that exercise. Now I'll, I'll do it. Like I, I'll I'll keep training pull ups and I'll keep going to the climbing gym every week and I'll eventually get strong enough to do it. Like it will happen eventually. Um, or just lose enough weight that I'm no longer too heavy to hold myself up um through diet like eventually it'll happen and then i'll do it and i'll be satisfied i'll I'll get a sense of satisfaction that will last five minutes and i'll be like really like i did all of that for that it'll just feel stupid like it doesn't feel it's whereas if it's a climb where it's like a, a, a problem where it's like a matter of uh oh but if you put your foot in this position and then drop your knee like this and then rotate your hips inward to the wall like this and then you can you can you can then that will let you reach this particular hold in this particular way and then you can do that without having to use brute strength to just force yourself past that part that feels satisfying that's like oh hell yeah like i figured it out like i did something like through me being good at good at it not this doesn't feel like that this just feels like you haven't grinded enough like that's it like you just haven't and that's just bullshit like i i don't that doesn't feel satisfying to me thankfully most of it's not like that 
most of it's um, a combination, uh, like a satisfying combination of strength and uh, agility and flexibility and uh, technique. Most of climbing is a is a good balance. And and to be fair, overhang like these extreme overhangs are that too. It's just that they're that for someone who is stronger than me. Like um, if you're a level of strong and uh, like if you are at the level of strength of like a mid a, a decent mid level climber then you know then technically it's a level playing field for all of them that they could technically complete some of these harder routes but it's just about having better technique um right like it, it's just that that's a level that's just at a different level that i haven't grinded to yet and so i just have to and that's just not that doesn't feel fun to me and yeah just that just kind of fucked me up a little bit but uh I guess eventually I'll get past it, and then then I'll I don't know then I'll get a minor victory in my life for once. Okay, I've run out of Umi Harakawa same music. Let's find some more music. Um, finding more music led me on a crazy journey where I was listening back to. I was like, maybe I have some more music on my computer that's like ambient and I can put in the background comfy and then I ended up like going through my music folders and then I ended up going through my No Thank You music and then I ended up listening to like all of Dead Form and then I ended up um, going through my SoundCloud and then I ended up listening to um, I forgot what the fuck what uh, Made of Blood and then I went a little schizo because I was like, that's a good song. And then I was like, I've not made music in ages and now I feel depressed. And then I was like, can I even still play bass guitar? And so I picked up my bass guitar, but I can still play bass guitar, so that's good. Um, but then I went a little fucking, now I'm kind of going a little man And then I realized I don't really have anything else to say in the podcast anyway, so I just put on this Benjamin's Dragon Millionaire song from my album, Benjamin's Dragon Millionaire. And I was like, I'm never going to be able to make something as good as Benjamin Dragon Millionaire again. And then I had like, yeah, this is like Sasuga artist, first world struggles or whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, I said at the beginning of 2022 that I was going to make 2022 my lost year. Because I was like, all the cool artists have like a lost year. I was like, I'm going to make 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 my like a lost year on purpose. Like, has anyone ever done that before? No, only me, only the coolest guy. No, thank you. So now this is my lost year, which is why I haven't made much music. But I actually haven't made much music because I'm fucking retarded and out of ideas. Because I had like one idea for the whole time and I kind of did it. And I had another idea and I did that too. So now I'm like out of ideas. But I have like an aesthetic that I like, but I can't really do it. And then I've started making some music, but then I'm just basically fucking retarded. I'm basically the Shinsei Kamata chan of being a retard. It's just, this is just like Gobino's quest. This is the Gobino's quest of life. Um, so, so now I'm stuck in my room complaining again. And that's basically the end of the podcast. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Climbing and um, consciousness isn't useful or whatever. Now I'm just... I, I don't know. I wanted to watch anime today, and then I downloaded some anime, and then in the time it took me to download the anime, I lost interest in watching anime, and then I've just been doing bullshit all day. I downloaded this anime called, um, uh, uh, wait, what, did, what anime did I download? I downloaded an anime called, well, I downloaded Dreamy to Marry, but then I watched like two seconds of Dreamy to Marry, and it was bad, and then I went on now to mark has dropped after the first episode and I realized it already dropped it after the first episode like four years ago so yeah my opinion on that hasn't changed so then I downloaded Kanamemo which is a show I dropped after like five episodes before and I was like I'm gonna pick that back up because I actually looking back on it like I, I at the time I didn't like it that much but looking back I have like fond memories of it so I'm like maybe I should keep watching Kanamemo um and then in the time it took to download I lost it just in watching anime uh, but now I kind of want to watch anime again. I have to just force it, and then hopefully it'll just like stick in my brain or whatever. I've been reading a lot of manga recently. I read um, 
can I get out all the manga I've read before the song ends? I read Shimeji Simulation, I read uh, um, Kira Kira Study, uh, I read um, uh, 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 I read some of this called uh, At- 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 Atsumare Fukushigi Kenkubu, but I dropped it. I read some of Choto Ipai, but I also dropped it. Um, it was good until I got melodrama God damn it, why does everything get melodrama uh, I started reading RPG Fudo-san, and then I was like, this is literally the anime, this is currently airing, I'll just watch the anime instead. Um, and then uh, I also started reading Kunoichi Tsuvaki no Mune no Uchi, and that also has a currently airing anime, so I don't know why I'm reading that. Then I started reading Lotte no Amocha, which I can't read in public, and then I started reading Onichan is Done For. Um, uh, which I thought I was gonna like not like I thought it was gonna be stupid and bad but it's actually kind of good which is kind of weird but apparently that's getting an anime adaptation too I just found out the other day um so uh there's that that's the otaku update um I just wanted to live in my room and never talk to anyone ever again uh and and uh live in my room and shut all the doors and have uh that be my life okay Goodbye.